What's up, ladies and gentlemen? Universal Mastery. Welcome back to my public YouTube channel. And today we are going to be speaking about, once again, another valuable subject here that I think a lot of you have had personal experience with. And this is something that I absolutely have had my own experience with as well. And I think is worth sharing because a lot of people are having a hard time navigating this. So we're gonna be speaking about what do you do when you have someone in your life that you love that is really going through a hard time to the extent where you see that they are actually creating a lot more pain and suffering for themselves. They're basically choosing the hardest path to walk, but you still love them and you want to be able to kind of wake them up to what's going on. You want to be able to tell them that something's off in the way that they're approaching it, but you know at your core, you can't do that. You know, you know at your core, you can't control the situation, so you just have to kind of let it play out in the way that it does. All right, so we're gonna be speaking about what happens when you see someone you love going down the hardest path possible um, and how do you really approach that? What do you do with that? Okay, this is the video, this is the subject. If this is something that you are interested in hearing a lot more about, then definitely stay tuned for the rest of the video. Okay, so let's go ahead and get started with this. So I just want to start with saying that I think a lot of us at some point in our lives have had this experience or maybe we've had multiples of these experiences before where, you know, there's someone in our life that we care about, someone in our life that we love, could be anyone. And we can see that this person is is obviously dealing with some sort of, you know, trauma that they're learning how to heal and that they're learning how to work with. Now, in many ways, sometimes we might see that this person is kind of struggling with understanding how to work with their own trauma and understanding how to navigate that and how to heal that to the point where some of their behavior patterns might be a little bit unhealthy. And that unhealthy behavior sometimes might even affect you, right? But you're in this situation where you really do love the person and you can see their core, but they're not just they're not really at that point yet where they know how to fully love themselves yet. So you kind of get to this point where you have to take a step back from the person. You have to create a boundary so that you can love yourself. And next thing you know, when you do this, you start realizing that they start going down a path that is we could almost say like a rebellious path so it's kind of like the same archetype of trauma from you know going through some form of childhood trauma and then you start rebelling against your parents so this person might start rebelling against you even though you are someone that had their best interest in mind and in heart and you offered them a lot of different support and perspective but then because you may create the boundary with them then they see you as a threat or they see you as the same overlay as their original abusers from their past. So, you know, what you might end up finding is that this person becomes rebellious and they start actively choosing a certain way of being and a certain way of living that is basically going against everything that is truly in their best interest. It's kind of going against everything that you may have supported them with everything that you may have communicated with them with it goes against a lot of their own natural energy like their own organic and natural energy of just being who they truly are they're now starting to kind of go down a path that you're you're able to see now and you can see that this is quite a destructive path 
and that it's not who they actually are. Now, the reason why they're going down that path is simply once again, because they're wounded, they're hurt. And it's sad to see that. And it's sad to see that this is a choice that they want to make rather than actually introspecting and really going deeper to the core of what's underneath the surface and being willing to release that or be, being able to actually process that. So, you know, when someone's in this position where they're going down the harder path and they're about to go through a lot of pain and suffering because of it, this is largely due to a strong protective mechanism that the person has that they're not aware that they're identified with. So this is going to be connected to a protector fragmentation within the psyche, could be connected to multiple protector parts, and that part is trying to protect them from actually getting to the core of what's truly underneath the surface, where that vulnerability is and where that wound is. And it's trying to protect them by saying, I need to now be this rebel. I need to now go down this path and you know, turn against everything that truly did love me or turn against everything that truly had my best interest in mind or turn against everything that brings up that sensation and emotion of my core wound. So the person once again is identifying with a protector fragmentation in the psyche and they're not aware that that's just a part of them. They actually think it's who they are. And then that protector part also thinks that's who they are. So it becomes this really disastrous kind of formula where the person embodies that part of themselves, and then they go on this rebellious kind of destructive streak where they start saying things, they start doing things, they start getting themselves into situations that create so much pain and suffering. They create so much unnecessary resistance for themselves and they don't even know what it is that they're doing, okay? And maybe deep down, they at their core, they know that it's not healthy. Maybe deep down, they know that it's not something that's really in their best interest, but they're being very attached and stubborn because they would, because their core wound is so vulnerable and their core wound is so painful that they would rather do that. They would rather get away from it with that part of themselves than actually go into it. So this is something that I think, you know, a lot of people have had experience with in life for people that, you know, you love and that you care about. So I can imagine that there's probably a lot of you that are parents that maybe have children that have gone down these pathways that you can see maybe isn't the best path for them. And maybe you don't really understand why they're choosing that path. Hopefully this video can help educate you on that. But overall, you see them going down a path that seems to be quite a painful, destructive path, but they're still going down that path. There's nothing that you can really do to, to change their mind or to control them in doing that. Even if you try, they're probably just going to rebel a little bit more. Okay, so it's a hard thing to, to observe and it's a hard thing to see when it's someone that you really care about and it's someone you love choosing this. You might notice this manifest in friendships. You might have a, a friend that you really care about and that you're you're close with, but then you know something happens in the relationship where then the friend goes on this streak of just kind of being rebellious and then choosing a path that is not in their best interest. You might notice this in relationships, like intimate partnerships where you're dating someone and then something happens and it leads to a separation and then the person goes on this destructive path that truly is not who they are, right? So it's a tough thing to see, you know, especially once again, if you really care about that person and especially if you know that you're there to truly be there as a support and you're there to love them, um, it's tough to know that that's what you want for them, but to still see them choose this path that is the harder path. But overall, when it comes to unconditional love, this is something that, you know, the person needs to experience. And if they didn't need to experience, then they wouldn't be going down this path in the first place. And the only thing that we can do when we see people kind of choosing this is give them a form of unconditional love. You know, unconditional in the love in the sense that, hey, I recognize that you're choosing this path. 
I see that this is not truly who you are, but I love you anyways, and I'm here for you. You know, even if you don't want to talk to me, even if you don't want to reach out, even if you're mad at me, even whatever the case is, I support you. I love you. You now go, go live your life, go experience what you need to experience. Okay. That's kind of the only thing that you really can do in these situations. And then as the person who's in that, you, you know, you have to also feel through those feelings of letting go of control and also watching someone that you love kind of choosing this path. Because the reality is for people that find themselves in these positions, you've probably been that person too. Okay. Like I know for me, for an example, like if I see this manifest in my life in any way, I've been through it myself. I've been that person that chose the harder path, created a lot of pain and suffering for myself that was not necessary, you know, stepped outside of who I truly am, you know, to, to try to make a point and be a rebel. And as I said, there was a lot of pain from that. But at the end of the day too, you know, I learned some lessons in that. I got to learn from that pain. Um, and all that I really wished that I had during those times was someone who truly loved me and supported me regardless uh, if I was going down that path or not. Because the whole driver of it was unhealed trauma that was kind of thrusting me into that that path of pain. Okay. And for me, that path was hanging out with the wrong crowd, people that were into drugs and, you know, robbing people and, you know, that kind of stuff. And, you know, using drugs myself, like that's how that destructive path very much so manifested for me for a period of my life. All right. And of course, there was a lot of trauma that I went through going down that path. So all we can do is feel the emotion of what that feels like to see someone that you love choosing that path, feeling through those feelings of what that actually feels like. You know, the hurt, the sadness, the the pain of like seeing that person you care about not seeing what their what not seeing their true self really. And and then simultaneously letting go of that control, letting go of the need to try to tell them or try to wake them up um, in a way that's not that's not healthy, in a way that's we're like pushing it on them. This is the value for us that are in this situation to work with because there are still, you know, emotional wounds that are inside of ourselves that we need to work with as well to better, you know, get in tune with our core. And to better you know heal from our past traumas and things of that nature so overall it's you know it's a challenging situation um it's one of those things where as i said you can't do anything about it you can't control it you have to let the person kind of play out their journey you have to let them go on their own path to experience what it is that they need to because at a certain point what happens is that protector part that is assuming their identity that is trying to choose this harder path that part of them is going to drive them into burnout okay that part of them is going to drive them into some sort of a catalyst that is going to be very painful and very stressful and it's going to be a gradual drip of catalyst until something kind of breaks open something breaks down or something shatters this is the nature of it. Like, this is how it works. And there's value in that. As painful as that is, there's value in it because then it shows the person who's going down that path that they had the ability and the autonomy to make their own decisions, to be independent in the way that they think that they want to be, and go and experience life in the way that they think is best for them. And that's valuable because that gives them a sense of self control. But then also, you know, with all things, there is a balance that takes place. They're not aware that the way that they're approaching independence or the way that they're approaching, um, you know, having that self autonomy and self control is actually in a destructive way that is not healthy. And that once again roots back to their original childhood traumas. That probably is the reason why they're resisting you in the first place if you're someone that actually cares about them and supports them. So, you know, if this is a kid that you're going through this with in a relationship, you know, 
maybe that that trauma is connected to you as the parents maybe that's why they're rebelling against you okay if this is a friend maybe you reflect a certain childhood wound back to them that they're not willing to face so then they project it onto you and then they start rebelling from you and that can be the same dynamic in a relationship an intimate relationship dynamic as well where you're not the source of their trauma you're not the original abuser but you might be reflecting things back that uh, surface some of their core wounds and that's something that they're afraid to face or that's something that they, they're not ready to go into yet so once again they then go down that path where they they have that sense of um i want to say it's like a false security where they think that they can be in control and they think they can control not having to feel those core wounds and then they're going to try to create a belief system and a mindset and of course behaviors that follow this idea that they can control what it is that they're truly feeling at the deepest core and that's eventually going to lead to catalyst um, that is going to resist them and it's going to be a consistent resistance that they're going to experience in other words they're not going to have they're not going to have many breakthroughs okay there's going to be breakthroughs here and there but there's going to be a lot of like hitting the wall and just keep running into the wall because they're resisting themselves at the end of the day you know at the end of the day the behavior pattern of this uh type of person is there are some deep deep core emotions that are still in the body that are needing to really be felt and they are trying to protect by getting away from those feelings and the more they try to shell up and create that barrier of strongness and rebellion and i am not of you know i am not going to be a victim or i am not going to let this take over my my body and shift me into who i truly am the more they resist that the more they're actually fighting against themselves and that's literally what it's all what it all comes down to and what its bottom line is they are fighting themselves okay and that's that's what makes this so hard to see when you love someone because you're watching them go through the pain of literally fighting against themselves but at the same time you have to let them have that experience and then they get to actually start that process of building a relationship with that part of themselves that they think is in their they get to build that relationship with the part of themselves that they think they are they think they are that part so they get to start actually realizing okay the more that i am attached or identified with this part of me the more yes i may get this false sense of security and false sense of control but then with it comes a lot of pain a lot of suffering an inability to fully open up in the way that i know that i want to or the way that i need to and it comes with different types of catalyst i mean it's going to manifest through other people other types of relationships it's going to manifest through job circumstances and all of these different types of things it's going to manifest through body symptoms you know your body might be in pain because you're literally resisting your own biology you're resisting your core in who you are as a person and all of your different hormone functions and your you know you know your, your the functioning of, of your organs even all right so you have to let them have that experience so that they eventually can make the choice themselves that they are ready to separate from that protective identity that they're ready to separate from that part of them that is trying to run away and that is trying to you know shell that is trying to overly protect and that is something that they have to do on their own they have to experience that on their own so that they can actually understand what it is that's going on in their psyche and in their system and they can start building a better relationship with their core self and all of their different parts and obviously the way that they get to eventually learn that lesson is going to be through the catalyst of being attached to that protector part or those protector parts in their system and eventually they will break open and stuff will release and then hopefully at that point they can start to open back up to true support and people that actually care about them and not have to filter their uh core wounds onto people that actually have their best interest in mind and that would be 
you know, the best case scenario for you as the person who just has to learn to let them go, have unconditional love for them as they're going through that process, observing it from the lens of understanding and just letting them have, you know, that, that cycle, letting them go through that. And then hopefully, once again, best case scenario is you can reconnect with them once they have learned that lesson that it is that they needed to learn and then you can support them from that point in a different way. Okay, so this is the video. This is something that I think a lot of you have experienced and I'm sure there are people that are experiencing this at the moment right now. So hopefully this could give you some education on this process so that you can know what it is that you know, you're supposed to be doing in this situation. You're not supposed to control it. You're not supposed to try to change them. You have to let them have their experience and you want to love them where they're at and still support them in the ways that you can, okay? So we're gonna leave it there. If this was valuable for you, thumbs it up, drop into the comment section. Let me know what you learned from this. Share your own perspective. I would love to hear it. Let me know if you've been through this yourself and how you went through this. Like, how did you approach the situation, okay? Hit the notification bell, get notified whenever I post, subscribe to my YouTube channel, send this link to someone that you also know may need to hear it because there's definitely people out there that need to hear this content uh, that are going through this and they don't really understand what's happening. So send it to someone. Now also make sure you check out my Patreon. That's the first link in the description. You can't miss it. The Patreon has over 1,200 members that are on the Patreon. There's over 270 plus exclusive videos. Everything is organized in different collection sections, all the way from occult education, initiation, ritualistic practices, nervous system regulation, education on trauma, and the whole host of everything. Okay, I have an entire new revamped quality magic training course, which is also uploaded to the Patreon, which is something that I would highly recommend you look into if you're an occultist looking for somewhere to get started in a very practical way. All right, so all that's on the Patreon. Tier three and four gives you access to a Universe B ritual service, which is a ritual that I perform on the 29th of every month. And it's an energetic transfer from me to you as the participant to support you through your development process, working with some of the deepest aspects of your unconscious mind and bringing what is buried inside of the nervous system up to the surface so that you can integrate it in a healthy way and better merge with your shadow so that your shadow can work with you, not against you. All right, it's a very powerful ritual service. There are literally 200 plus members that take advantage of it every single month. So look into it. All of that's in the first link below. Second link is where you can book a one-on-one -on -one call with me. I would love to talk to you. It's also where you can jump into mentorships if that's something that you're also interested in. Okay, mentorships are going to be six week or three month. This is the most intimate and powerful way to personally work with me. We are going to be going in depth with your personal foundation, creating one for you so that we can start regulating your nervous system, we're going to start touching on some of the repressed emotions that you have in your body and we're going to be going into deep education on how to better work with these things and integrate these things. Once that foundation is locked in, which takes some time, then we can talk about occult initiation if that's something you're interested in to further support this whole process. All right, so check it out. All that's in the second link below. Also in the second link, you can book a tarot card reading with Alexia. She's a very gifted tarot card reader. She can help you understand what you're currently going through and then what to expect moving into your near future, connecting it back to astrology and the Kabbalistic tree. So definitely take advantage of that as well in the second link. Third link is the Lucifer's Foundation course. This course gives you everything step-by-step step you need to know to develop a healthy, active relationship with the energy that is known as Lucifer. Tons of people have purchased this course. We have received tons of valuable feedback. So definitely, if you're interested, look into it. It's the third link. Now, the fourth link is my YouTube memberships. This is where you can become a part of the Universal Mastery family. And I would love to have you a part of the family. It's always fun to see like-minded individuals and familiar faces appearing uh, 
all the time when I do these live streams or when I look into the comment sections. I would love to have you a part of the community. Now, the fifth link is going to be my book recommendations for you. This is the fundamentals of occultism that you can actually use as tool books for the rest of your process working with spirituality uh, and specifically the occult. It gives you everything you need to know in the fundamental uh, with the fundamental basics of everything. OK, so definitely make sure you check that out as well. Um, and yeah, and that's pretty much going to wrap it up. So with that being said, we're going to leave it here. I appreciate all of you so very much. And I hope you all really do have an amazing rest of the day or night, wherever you are. And I will see you in the next video. Peace.